All right, here we go. So this is the kind of the realm that we're in before we actually get to the tutorial. This is like the pre-pre-tutorial. And for those of you that have seen any footage of this game, or perhaps you've been lucky enough to play in some of the beta tests yourself, you'll notice immediately that there is a big difference in the interface. So you'll see on the bottom left, you've got your health bar, your rest meter, and then your hunger bar. And then at the bottom center, you have your right hand and your left hand. And now the numbers actually go from one to zero rather than from six to zero and then one to five, which is a little bit confusing. Personally, I did actually like the aesthetic of the uh, old UI, but this is much more simplified. And I think this will probably appeal to a much larger group of people, but it is a big change. That's the first thing you're going to notice if you have seen any of this before. So yeah, you can see that you are automatically put into third person. If you prefer to play in first person, you just hit F5 and you will go straight into first person. Personally, I do prefer first person and then I switch to third person for certain situations. And then when we're running, you can see the stamina bar pop, pop up at the bottom. There we go. How now, fleshling? There we go, we are following With Puck's voice. Lost in our Somewhere favor. mysterious. Here we go, our very Shall first Fae portal. Quickly, and here he is. Those bound fiends <laughs> the Fae, the myth of the despair. legend. So yeah, this is your first Fae portal that you're going to interact with, which is super cool. I do love this area. This is the first time you visit it. So, well, I'll say the first time, the only time you visit it. So definitely absorb all of the cool things. For sure. So yeah, Puck is going to be your guide throughout the entire tutorial. So Shadows he does talk at you quite a lot, <laughs> yet like which a we'll listen to. Final embers, you refuse to be snuffed out. If you do want to skip through it, though, just just repeatedly hit next. If you're not that bothered by what he's saying, he is he is quite cryptic. <laughs> I come with an offer to guide you to a safer realm and rebuke death, unlike so many of your kin. Yeah, essentially, all of the important stuff is going to be highlighted to you. So if you do want to skip through it, take these bloodstained cards. You can cards, do that. Play them and let amiable bond be drawn between Fay and Fleshling. Give me your hands that we may be friends, and I shall restore amends. Amosit in kunul ame. I actually don't know what that means. I don't know if Olivia is still here. She might know what that means. I'm pretty sure it's Latin. I do not know what that means. But there we go. So, uh, Hurry yonder toward portal there we go. And Instructions. Apparatus, so you, bare child of Earth, might abscond this nightmare. Travel to the forest byway swiftly. Across the divide, a greater gift awaits. Partnerships with we Fay afford many wonders yet unseen. There we go, and so they disappear. <laughs> I love Puck's animations. They are they are fantastic. So somebody was asking about what was in the other direction. All of the paths lead to this room. Um, this is like the the pre-tutorial area. You you can't like go and farm stuff as as far as I've been able to see or anything. You 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 you're just trying to get through it essentially. What this is teaching you is how to use the realm card machine. So whenever you visit a Fey portal inside a realm, or perhaps you've built your own set of portals at your base, which is something I like to do, you'll have a, uh, a variation of a realm card machine, which is where you play your cards. And it, it will prompt you to pick two cards. You have to play two cards to produce a realm. Okay. According to Google Translate, it was not Latin. What was it then? But yeah, as part of the tutorial, you're being forced to go through the byway realms, which are the tutorial realms, and they are the same for everybody. These are the only realms which are not procedurally generated. So byway card is your major card. Essentially, your major card will dictate your difficulty. It's one of two ways to change your difficulty. You can also change your difficulty down here. As you can see, you can make it doubly hard if you want to down the line. And then you've got your biome card. So we've got the forest, the swamp and the desert. But as part of the tutorial, we are forced to go to the forest first. So that is exactly where we're going to go. Now, this is the fun bit. Fly, The fiends have caught your Because if you don't go through here too soon, then look what happens. Uh, they're going to bite us and eat us. What were those horrible creatures? <laughs> they are a kind of 
Yeah, we'll see what they are, but they are a kind of corrupted, warped fey that exist in this area known as the Pale, between the fey world and the human world. So when you open a fey portal, they come out. It's kind of scary. It's kind of cool. There we go. Repairing realm. Let's go. Okay, so for future reference, when you do move around realms, it will always give you an overview of what the two cards are doing that you're playing. And if you click on NPCs and creatures, it will show you the types of NPCs and creatures that have a chance of appearing. Um, NPCs are a given. Potential creatures, not all of them necessarily will. Um, Apex creature, this is your boss creature. Only certain types of realm will spawn a boss creature. And it's not the easier realms. It's obviously not the tutorial. <laughs> but let's go. Let's continue on to the forest. Here we go. And Puck is appearing to speak with us again. Count thyself among the fortunate few who manage to flee the Pale's noxious proliferation. Nightingale still stands, but Earth teeters on the brink, and these wilds are far from hospitable. Sequ the gift Whoops. I promised today, <laughs> thy cause. I skipped him by accident. A hermetic guidebook and pocket watch, purloined off the corpse of a realm walker. Keep these like close companions. With the man-made network sundered, entrust me to find the trail forward through these byway realms. In the interim, I hear your stomach snarling. It is indeed. We're hungry. Take reprieve from misery and gorge yourself with a feast fit for a fleshling. Preserve yourself and I shall return anon. Oh, under this mask you wonder... I am Puck, Robin to some, Oberon's merry wanderer of the night, the last furtive fay to grace your kind. And off he goes. Bye, Puck. There we go. So, the tutorial, you'll notice in the top right hand side, we are being prompted to find a food source of berries. So, Pretty straightforward. There's some right in front of us. Bam! One lot of berries has been gotten. You can hold small items like food and torches in your offhand. So there we go. So you can see in my left hand, that's my offhand. And you'll see that corresponds with numbers six to zero. So those aren't interchangeable. You either have items you can put on your right hand or your left hand. Okay. And in some instances, you can carry one in each, which is pretty cool. There we go. Is your home realm safe? No. No, it is not, Rach. And we are human. I believe we are human. Yes. And we are trusting Puck Y. I am not entirely sure, but he is our only guide, so I guess we're going to take it. So it's asking me to eat raw berries, so we've already got them equipped, and we just hit F to eat. There we go. There we go. Food replenishes hunger. There we go. If your hunger drops too low, you'll begin to lose max health. If your hunger runs out, you will succumb. <laughs> Okay, now we need to get rocks, we need to get sticks, and we need to get some more berries. So, sticks, they can be found in piles on the ground, or you can also get sticks from farming bushes. So, I'm just going to go around and like pick up all of these things here, as much as I possibly can. We have no tools at the moment, so we're just doing everything by hand. There we go. We can see on the right we've got loads of sticks. And then rocks are found in little piles like this. There we go. So the little rocks you find are different from stone blocks. You end up farming stone blocks from the bigger rocks. You see, it says it requires a pickaxe, which we don't have yet. So it's these little ones that we're looking for. There we go. So we've got all of those that we need. Acquire the raw berries. Five. Okay, so we're looking for some more berry bushes as well. Let me see. Yeah, here's one here, purple berries. One, two... Uh, there's one. Three. Four. And five. There we go. And of course, all food in this game is better when cooked. Even just singular ingredients. The singular berries, singular mushrooms, all the rest of it. Always cook them where you can because they will give you better stats. They will also, um, they will give you longer time as well, which is great. Uh, let's have a look. Crafting and basic repair. Here we go. So I just hit C for crafting. There we go. Place our campfire. All of the building systems in Nightingale are run off a blueprint system. 
There we go. So we can simply add what we need to add. There we go. So we have two components to this. You need to add a type of fuel. So I'm just going to add my fiber there. And then you kind of look at the bottom to add the fuel. And then you look at the top to craft your items. So roasted berries, raw blueberries. There we go. Craft. Delightful. There we go. Okay, so now the next task we're being presented with is eat the berries. So you can see the cooked berries on the number six slot. There we go. Nom, 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 nom. Puck is very pleased with what we have done. Just to clarify, you can only get the drops if you own the game and if you've opened the game once. After you've opened the game once, you can follow the link, which is in the chat, and you can link your accounts together. Yes. And you do have to own the game. You got to own the game first. I am streaming all week. The drops are on all week, so don't worry. There isn't like a pressure to have to get them today, but there is a pressure to have to get them within the week. Absolutely. Exclamation mark specs. I will once we're out the tutorial. I will talk a little bit about uh, the running of the game and stuff. Absolutely. If you're if you're kind of concerned if your PC is going to be able to run it or not or whatever. But there we go. Those are the specs. Ah. <sighs> You've avoided embarrassment by staving off starvation. From the lingering scent, your meal was no summer court banquet. But at least you persist. We must carry forth whilst this byway is aligned with another. One which should get us closer to necessities we'll both require. The portal stands nearby. Delay not, for the withering sands await. All right, folks, so Puck is prompting us to go through our, I guess, our second portal. Here we go. They don't always look like this, by the way. They have kind of different ways that they can appear in the world. This is just one design. But each realm will have its own fey portal. So this is where we're going. Oh! Getting run at by the deer. Okay, so now we're going to the desert byway realm. There we go. There's a desert card. I actually have the desert card. Oh, I put it back away. I actually have some cards here. How cool is that? <laughs> okay, we're going to open up the portal. Uh, in this realm, you don't need to worry about the bound uh, coming to attack you. That happens later. Once you actually have a weapon. The game, the game isn't that mean. It's not going to make you fight stuff whilst you can't do a weapon. All right, on we go to the desert, folks. Okay, we're confirming you can earn time towards the drops, but you can't claim them. I might have to look into this just to be sure. Yeah. We're loading in. Yeah, each realm is its own server, so it does take time to load them. Okay, and you can immediately see there's a slight issue when you're in the desert. You get you get pretty hot. <laughs> I'm going to talk about this first. Um, once the heat gets to halfway, you get the hot debuff, which you'll be able to see in the bottom left. And this reduces your maximum stamina. Once it goes all the way, it reduces it further. So, quite obviously, if you want to get rid of that debuff, yeah, we, we, we can see 33 stamina there now. If I go stand in the shade, eventually that debuff's going to start to go away. And you can see that our maximum stamina goes up. There we go. There are other ways other than going and standing in the shade or standing under a, a building that you can get rid of that. But we'll talk about that later. We're going to go talk to Puck. Summer runs see what he has to say. Being as blood runs through yours. Yet I've seen that dew men call sweat flow like rivers in our deserts. This heat devours spirit and life alike. How be it? Enduring the elements is part of the realm walker's folly. Pleasure sought through vanquishing hostility. Whether this pleases or not, without shelter and the means to defend it, you'll not last long. Best to test your nesting prowess and avoid exhaustion while I scour for the next byway. All right, there we go. So we're being prompted to set up a makeshift shelter, which uh, is going to mean that we can... Um... We can rest. You'll notice another debuff that's now appeared in the bottom left, which means we're getting tired, which is bad because that, again, decreases uh, your stamina regen, decreases your maximum stamina. 
it's not good. And if you if you don't see the debuff happen, you will hear it because your character starts to yawn. It's quite funny. So we need to build a bed and we need to put the bed underneath a shelter for it to be more effective. So we're going to have to endure the, the sunshine for a minute. Unfortunately, we need to pick up sticks. I think it's sticks and fibre. So sticks on the ground look like that. Fibre in the desert is... Oh, we got a friend. We got a little friend. These guys are... Um... Oh, he just dropped sticks. I have never noticed that before. He just dropped sticks. Well, thank you very much, sir. Yeah, he won't cause you a problem unless you cause him a problem. So just let him be. It's all good. But yeah, finding fibre in the desert, it's not so abundant as in the forest. Um, yeah, so you might have a bit more of a hard time going around and finding it. There is, I know that there is a, an area of water over here, so I'm going to make my way over there because there's a bunch of fibre that we can grab. Let's go. Let's go. We've got these friendly guys. I say they're friendly. They're friendly until you touch them. <laughs> and then they're not so friendly. We're going to leave those. I've never actually tried to die in the tutorial, but I suppose it probably would be possible. But if you if you don't touch anything in the forest and desert tutorial biomes, you should be fine. <laughs> Just don't touch the butts, guys, okay? Here we go. Loads of fiber down by the water. Water's pretty scarce in the desert. Um, and I think it's important to say that each of the biomes, each of the three biomes will have its own environmental hazards that you're going to have to deal with. And it all really depends on your, like what you personally are able to deal with more or less. I, I struggle in the desert with the lack of stamina because the heat is everywhere. And maybe not so much in this particular biome, but most of the time in deserts, you've got really large areas really large open areas without any shade and although eventually you can make an umbrella to carry which will protect you from the shade if you for example i don't know encounter a creature that you want to fight you have to unequip that umbrella to hold your axe or your pickaxe or whatever and then before you know it you're in a fight and your stamina's crap i don't enjoy that as, as pretty as a desert is i don't enjoy that so much personally and the reason why I'm going all the way back over here to make my stick hut is because in the tutorial, once you put down your stick hut and your bed, Puck will appear over here. So it kind of makes sense to just come back and, and build it over here. So to go into your build menu, you're going to hit B. And we are going to place our lovely stick tent. There we go. Hit E to add the resources. Bam! And you'll notice that depending on uh, what biome you're in, the stick tent here is red because we picked up red fiber. If we were to build this in a forest, it would be a different color. It would be a different color if we built it in the swamp because each resource carries its own unique properties, which is really important for crafting. We're not going to do that right now, but we will look into that. And then bed. There we go. Add the resources to the bed. If you, if you, what does that say? If your rest drops too low, you will begin losing max stamina. And yeah, you'll succumb if it gets to zero. Same with health. You don't want anything to get to zero, basically. <laughs> there we go. Uh, can can you take desert sticks to a forest biome? Yeah, I, ooh, I think so, Bid. Um, I, I can try and build a stick hut um, with what we have. Because I'm, I'm going to pick the forest biome. That's all I'm picking. Spoilers. We're picking we're picking the forest biome. Short rest. There we go. So you'll notice now that the... Uh, yeah, the uh, rest debuff is gone. Which is amazing. Well, the unrested debuff, I should say, has gone. Uh, we are hungry. Did we not carry our food with us? Oh, apparently our food disappeared after the forest realm. Well, we're just going to have to be hungry for a little bit, I think. We're being prompted to uh, craft some tools... Let's take a look. So your first tier of tools and weapons that you're going to craft is the uh, the makeshift, and that is all crafted within your own inventory. You do not need a bench to craft these things. Um, there we go. We're going to add in our rocks. Uh, oh, I've already done that. Wait! I pressed a button that I shouldn't have. You have no... Oh, <laughs> I, I, I ran out of sticks. My bad. Okay, we'll go get some more sticks. Oh, wait, I made two knives? Oh, I'm such a numpty. I made two knives, chat. Don't do what I did. Don't waste your resources. <laughs> Somebody saying the desert isn't pretty? I don't know. I think this is like almost when you look at the uh, surrealist floaty architecture and some of the creatures, it's almost like ste stepping into a Salvador Dali painting. Like, I think it's stunning. 
Each to their own, though. A lot of it is subjective, of course. And yeah, I mean, this tower, I don't think you can. You could, you could technically, eventually, you could. Like, if this was in a different biome, you could. But I don't think I would have the means to. Like, I would need climbing picks that I can't make yet. And also, like, we're hungry. We need to get to the next biome so that we can... Uh, I know that a food source is in the next biome. Essentially. But yeah, we're being asked to make one of each tool. I stupidly made two knives. This is actually um another good point. Uh, oh my god, they've changed the way they do this. You can now drag stuff off your hotbar. That's amazing. Uh, if you have a piece of equipment you don't need, you can right-click on it and extract. And it will turn into something called essence dust, which you are going to need to repair your items. Okay, it's kind of like the currency, the lifeblood of Nightingale. Let's have a look. We need to exit that. We need to take a look. So we did the hunting knife. Mining pick. Craft. So because we only have like one type of each resource, I'm just going to hit the crafting button here. Uh, it doesn't really matter in the tutorial because we're very quickly going to move on to the next tier anyway. Wow, why, why am I dying? Wait, how am I dying? Why do I have... Wait, what? Why am I dying? I'm dying. Oh, I'm really hungry. Yeah, well, tutorial, you got rid of my food. I had berries. Can I eat flowers? Can I eat flowers as an emergency? No. <laughs> no. Oh, no. We're going to die, chat. Never mind. We're going to die. I've never died in the tutorial, so this will be a first. Apparently, we need to get some more sticks there. There we go. More sticks. In and out, because you're working. Is there a third person? Yeah, hit F5. The third person, make sure you've got enabled it in your set. Uh, make sure you've got it enabled in your settings before you start as well. There we go. Uh, okay, what do we need? We've got our knife, our pickaxe, our sickle. We still need a wood axe and a torch. Wood axe, craft torch eventually what you can do is you see if you want to you can you can have many different types of a resource which will all have different properties which will all have an effect on the item that you're crafting which is what makes this game truly unique i think in that every item you make is truly unique to you depending on i don't know what you want it to look like what color you want it what I think the most obvious one is, you know, do you prefer having better health regen or better stamina regen or resistance to certain types of magic? It's super cool. You can eat the flowers. But, I mean, the tutorial is stopping me from completely dying, I think. Uh, we can eat the flowers. I can consume. Uh, that didn't really do anything. <laughs> Sadly, we're still kind of kind of dying. But in, in, the, uh, in the next part of the tutorial, uh, we will get a proper food source. I honestly didn't realise that the, the berries we got in the forest biome didn't carry over. That is uh, that is strange to me, but that's okay. Right, we should be able to make the torch now. There we go. Torch. Craft. There we go. Bang in. So the torch goes on your offhand. The other tools go on your uh, regular hand, as you can see. Like, some tools you can carry with a torch, and others you can't. It slipped my skull that Earth's great citadels resulted from decades of toil. Still, I expected more than that lowly truss of sticks and the haphazard cudgel you now hold. You'll need better woodworking skills than that when we reach our destination proper. It affords the perfect setting for... Well, we shan't ruin the surprise. Well. Let us depart, and speak of your ill-favoured constructs no more. One final byway of muck and mire, then this path of beginnings shall fork unbounded into whatever endings you seek. All right, here we go. I love this animation, it's the best! <laughs> uh, we probably shouldn't be like, I don't know if uh, having the torch out is, is going to make us hotter, but uh, I don't think it does. But uh, I feel like having a torch out in the desert in the daytime is probably not the best idea. All right, before we go through the portal, hope echoes. Grab them where you can. They will do lots of different things depending on which context you pick them up. They will give you bits of lore that you can read through as well. They will give you, sometimes they give you recipes to items as well. Sometimes they give you essence dust. 
Uh, so always, always go out and seek them. I did see one over here. Uh, for those of you that have played the game before in beta tests, the way that hope functions is slightly different now. Um, they, they changed this a while back, but um, hope used to uh, basically decrease as you spent longer times away from base. They they cut that out. They cut it out because they felt the game was less enjoyable, essentially that way. So at the moment, what does hope do? Well, not a lot, but they do have plans to make it more functional in the game. At the moment, you can release these hope echoes to gain rewards and lore. So yeah, always find them. Yeah, there we go. And you can always go back and read these things that you find as well. There we go. Okay. Yeah, we are stuck on two health. So I'm feeling maybe at least until the swamp, we're not gonna be able to die. <laughs> I don't know if anybody, if anybody wants to test that out. <laughs> But there we go. Okay, swamp card. Final byway card. Let's go. I love just how amazing is this color scheme? It's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. There we go. Um, I, I did have my berries on my hotbar. They, they, I, I didn't leave them on the fire. I promise you. So yeah, that didn't work, Robson. We tried that. I, I think it might be a tutorial thing. Yeah, I think it might be a tutorial thing. It might work when you are through to the Abeyance Realms. It's so pretty, I know. It's stunning. Okay, Swamp. Now, only marginally, I would say the Swamp is probably out of the three realms that you can, or the three biomes you can pick to start in. I would say the Swamp is the trickiest. But then it does have uh, a bunch of resources that you can't easily find in other realms. So th there's always a payoff to that, I think. But um, we'll speak to Puck first. If not for Get some food. decree, this trek would have been as easy as peach pie. We Fey are forbidden from consulting with your kind. And while my amity is yours, it behooves us both to what move word. with caution. Behooves. I but don't even know what that battle. means, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> the bound guard fey archways that align with temporal realms. As they're already acquainted with your despair, those fiends will emerge when you try to leave this final byway. While I know man's impulse is to flee, without pluck, you're sure to expire. Prepare yourself, Realm Walker. Once this fen is within our wake, a fine morsel of knowledge I shall bequeath. Ahead lie relics of humanity's future. All right. So we're being told to go and slay a predator. And then what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to cook the meat and finally not be hungry. I'm pretty sure we can't die of hunger. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So here we've got some aggressive swamp creatures coming in. I'm going to go for the axe. Axe is, I think, my favorite weapon. <laughs> Uh, are you going to kill me, though? That would be quite funny if we end up dying to this thing. He's actually... That's amazing. <laughs> he was aggro to the little guy. Yes! <laughs> Run! Little squirrel rat thing. Be free! Be free. Okay, so now we can use our skinning knife to get hide meat and bones, which are all going to be used in cooking or crafting. There we go. And you can just hold down E to auto pick up all of those things. We're going to need to build ourselves another campfire, which I always think it's in the building menu, but it's is it in the building menu. Yeah, it is. There we go. It's in the building menu, not the crafting menu. There we go. Okay, we still need we need one rock, apparently. We're still looking for those little uh, piles of rocks. There we go. That's that there. That's that there. Add fuel. Let's just add five sticks. Ignite. Craft item. Roasted meat. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is a really interesting thing. We can already see some different types of meat, which is super cool. So tier one predator will be different to tier one prey. If you look on the right hand side, tier one predator there, it's got all these different attributes uh, that, that are going to help you when you eat. Obviously, the higher tier 
the resources, the better attributes there will be, or the better properties, whatever you want to call it. This is a rare drop from a tier one uh, Lypuridon. Fabled meat, you you more commonly find this uh, a little bit later in the game, but this offers better attributes if you eat it, basically. Look. There we go. Only just, though. Not much, but it also offers different attributes as well. There we go. So this here, for example, at the bottom, miasma resistance, 5%. And instead, this offers 10% blight res resistance. Blight is um, a disease, which we'll talk about in a minute. <laughs> uh, yes, you can come encumbered. Absolutely. There are ways around that down the line as well. Don't worry. If that's one of the things that annoys you in a survival game, there are ways that you can fix that up. Not quite yet, though. We, we, we're we not at risk of becoming encumbered until we start to build our base, to be honest. Okay, so we're cooking the meat. I'm, I'm going to leave the fancy meat for now. We're going to save that and hold on for that for when we do boss fights and things like that, you know? But now we'll just eat the basic stuff. Okay, there we go. It's asking me to kill more things for more resources. Wait, did I? I'm wondering if... <gasps> okay, there is something that's changed from the build that I had. I mean, I need to eat something because we're going to die. Uh, the meat automatically went into my hotbar. Before, what happened is you would have to pick it out of the craft pot and drag it over. So they're just making it easier. That's cool. I'm down with that. <laughs> you can see our health going up finally. And you can also see on the bottom left the timer. 12 minutes on that piece of meat. You can eat up to three pieces of food, by the way, as well. So where you can, it's always good. To try to eat some more. There we go. All right, we need to kill a couple more things. Let's go and find some more Lypurid. And usually where there's one, there are several. I can see some over here. These these are pretty easy to fight, if I'm honest. Uh, the fighting definitely becomes a lot more interesting as you progress. Pretty straightforward. Here we go. Bam! I mean, barely got an attack in there, but you can block by right clicking. You can block an attack. These guys like to jump around. They like to trick you. <laughs> so the higher level ones can be quite challenging. But yeah, we're only on level 10. That's like the uh, the basic level. There we go. So yeah, each weapon will have its own second ability. So the axe, if you right click, is going to block. With the pickaxe, it's the same as well. Block. Eventually, when you get your slingshot, uh, that special ability will be to kind of zoom in on your aim. Uh, what is it for knife? Oh, lunge. There you go. A special ability is lunge for the knife. So depending on, yeah, what type of weapon, uh, you know, what type of second ability you like, you can pick all, in my experience of Nightingale, all of the tools also secondary as weapons. You can down the line add enchantments and infusions and magical things to them to give them extra benefits as well for uh, when you're fighting and also when you're resource farming, actually. So we still need to grab one more of these guys. Let's have a little look. Where are yous? I see you. Well, I thought I saw you. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, wow. Wait, what just happened? Oh, you just killed the little guys. Let me mean. Oh, wow. That was an unsuccessful block there. He got me. There we go. Oh, he's having a little... Uh... <laughs> A little, a, a little spasm there. All right, so this should then tick off the next stage in the tutorial. There we go. All right, so it's asking us to craft our first piece of clothing, a makeshift caplet. So this is, yeah, you can see already we're making new clothes, <laughs> essentially. Then let's have a look. Craft, makeshift caplet, hide and fiber. Since we only have one type of each for now, that is, uh, that is what we're going to use. And then that should have gone into our inventory. We can drag it over. So you can see the gear score of each individual item in the top left. This is 10. You see all the different attributes that are accumulated because of the types of resources that we're using for crafting. And then our overall gear score is up here, but this will change. You see it says six. If you if you are holding a weapon or not holding a weapon, that will change, essentially. I actually can't put a weapon away to show you right now. But um, once we have like different tier weapons, you'll be able to see that gear score change. Acquire a healing salve and roast meat. Okay, so we need to go cook up some more meat. You also make your your first basic healing cells in the cook pot as well. Oh, okay, there's more. More, uh... 
jumpy Lyplorodons. I might have to make myself another cookbox. I'm not going to lie to you. I am not 100% sure where I put the last one. Oh, dear. Nope, 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 nope. I'm pretty sure it was on a rock somewhere. But yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna run away and put down a new one. They're pretty cheap. Ow! <laughs> okay, let me deal with you. Where, what are you doing, pal? So yeah, these guys... Oh, actually, you see... I don't know if you noticed that. It was very quick, but there was a gold number up here. That gold number, that's a headshot. Gold numbers mean headshots or if you're using a ranged weapon, heart shots. So they... They give more damage. There we go. Okay, am I okay? Am I safe to build this now? Yeah, let's put in another one. Oh god, we need rocks. Okay, well, luckily. Luckily resources, basic resources are never far. I think it is worth pointing out actually that resources at the moment, most of the time don't respawn. So it really does encourage you to kind of go out and explore different realms to gather your resources. Uh, the one exception that I've noticed is trees. There are two ways you can get your trees to respawn. Later in game, you can cast a spell. That will it's like, it's like a regrowth spell to regrow your trees. And there's also a creature. It's like a spirit deer called a Carnute, which we'll meet at some point. And if he walks past your tree stumps, they will they will regrow. But other than that, yeah, you're going to have to do a lot of traveling, I think, to, uh, to get everything you need. Uh, okay. Bam. Bam. One stick. Is that going to be enough? That's going to be 30 seconds of fuel. Quick! Roasted meat. Uh, it's said for us to do three, so let's do that. You can see the, pro the, the progress. But yeah, it looks like now the stuff when you craft it goes straight in your inventory. You used to have to pick it up. Which I guess is just an extra step that isn't necessary. Okay, we might have to put some more fuel in. Because uh, it's going to run out. But yeah, you can extinguish and then restart and it will just continue the crafting. There we go. Oh, so you can collect the items before they're done if you're crafting multiple items. Okay, so it's still crafting up one more. Uh, you'll notice the little slots as well under campfire. Let me just show you that. I'm just going to get my salves cooking as well. Uh, oh, did I do that? Yeah, there we go. Oh, no. Okay, we did run out of fuel. There we go. Night. So you see when I hover over this, you've got these uh, four like little hexagons with plus slots under the word campfire. You can go out in the world. Excuse me, I'm trying to talk about the tutorial. Rude. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Maybe I've got like five health. Well, it's a good time to make salves. <laughs> okay, let's see a look. There we go. Salve. Health. Apparently food is an issue as well. There we go. I know that I'm, I've already got... I've already eaten meat, but I, I, need, I need to eat more. But yeah, when you hover over this, the four hexagons with the plus signs, you can go out in the world, you can trade for and find items called augmentations, which have an associated crafting bench or crafting vestibule, and they will increase crafting times. They will increase the number of recipes that you can cook or make in that thing. So at the moment, this has no augmentations, but... It's a tutorial, so we'll, we'll get there. Excuse me, don't don't you dare get rid of my campfire, so rude. Okay, let's farm these up before we before we move on. I think I uh, yeah I stupidly cancelled the cooking of the meat, so I need to put that back in. There we go. There we go. Whoa. Yeah, the crafting bench setup, it's a little bit complicated to begin with, but once you understand how the system works, you can create some truly unique items. Which, as a survival game enthusiast, I don't know, that excites me. That's great. I love that. But yeah, if you feel like this is a bit slow at the moment, what I'm saying is there are ways to make the cooking and crafting process quicker, essentially. Uh, wait. I'm definitely doing meat. Yeah, I am. It, 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 just, it took a second for the tutorial to catch up on the right-hand side. There we go. Nightingale time! Yeah! Yeah, I'm going into, like, tutorial mode at the moment, as in, you know, the way I'm narrating. Uh, the whole stream won't be 
entirely like this, guys. We are going to be teaming up with Molly Berry very shortly. If we could do a shout out for Molly Berry, that'd be amazing. But a lot of the stuff that I'm streaming right now, I'm going to put into a YouTube video. So this, <laughs> I end up kind of changing the style in which I'm speaking a little bit, I think. But, um, oh, thanks, Rinks. It, it, it will need a mod to do it. <laughs> but I appreciate that. Thank you. It will need one of the moderators to do it. Okay, there we go. So we've got all the meat we need. There's still some cooking. We're now being asked to repair an item. So we need to go to our inventory. Repairing items costs essence, which is the currency in Nightingale. If you're wondering where to get essence from in the very beginning, one of the easiest ways is to uh, deconstruct items to make essence. So I can right click on anything and extract it into there we go eight essence i do find in the early stages of the game flowers give a higher ratio of essence dust than for example for example fiber fiber is really easy to find though so fiber is also good to go and collect and extract into essence dust but yeah if you need to repair something you just right click it repair bam done cost essence dust but yeah you're gonna have to get used to doing that return to puck well, I would do, but I don't know where he is. Fuck. Where are you, my dude? There we go. You've stolen life to preserve your own. Wow, make me feel bad, why don't a you? A necessity, lest it become a vice. One imbibed by men like dandelion wine. Now, I've led you about around. Through bog, through bush, through brake, through briar. And forthwith... A temporal realm of abeyance awaits. And so too, Nightingale. First you must oblige your inner essence and choose the landscape that beckons. Aha. No need for words. Only thought. Yeah, Olivia same. I'm like, I'm a huge fan of the language in this game. I, I realize for some people it might be a bit off-putting in in a sense but personally i really i really like the intelligence behind it um i need to find this out from the devs and actually some of you might know this answer but the whole kind of premise of the game is based around a victorian novel i think it's a victorian novel i need to figure out what it is because i want to order it and read it um but yeah the whole kind of shakespearean thing is pretty cool absolutely so yeah at this point you have to pick your starting biome um, all I will say is don't worry if you end up picking the wrong one because you can move your base. So it doesn't have to be a permanent decision, okay? I like the forest. I think the forest is one of the easiest to set up in as a beginner. And for me, aesthetically, I prefer it. And a lot of where you choose to live is going to be based on how it looks and how you enjoy the colour palette and all the rest of it because it's going to eventually be so easy for you to to move between loads of different realms for all the resources you need so personally yeah i i, I don't tend to factor in so much oh this resource uh, this this biome has amazing resources because i'm going to be moving around anyway um but forest for me environmentally as well i i find a bit easier to manage the mystery of the, the desert or the swamp Okay, so we need to go to the byway. Play your cards, but beware. Byway, not the byway. The bound Portal. will storm once the archway rouses. Okay, so we're going to get to attack the bound for the first time. Skulls. The bound are those creatures, Shall those no corrupted mercy. fae, that live in the pale between the two worlds. But there is one thing we didn't look at, actually, which we'll we'll look at very quickly. That thing in the very distance is a is the fae portal that we're heading towards. By the way, that triangle thing, it looks different to the two others we've seen. Um, we've not I can't believe we've not really found any yet, but the swamp is obviously covered in swamp water. Here we go. Some is upcoming and there's yeah, th there are some effects that uh, you need to be aware of when traversing the swamp. So, here we go. I, I like how the area that I've come in actually doesn't have that much water. But yeah, you'll notice a, a drowning creature. Yeah, you'll notice the wet debuff that affects stamina, disease. This is quite bad. Watch this. Okay, as soon as that gets halfway, your health starts ticking down. There we go. And if it goes all the way, it will start ticking down even more. And obviously, it, it might not be so clear here in a tutorial, but a lot of the swamp biomes you're going to enter are covered in swamp water. And it's to me, that's a big annoyance. That's a big thing. Having to go through and have your health tick down. 
Yeah. Thank you, Olivia. I was completely incorrect. It's a 2004 novel. My bad. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell is the book. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to order it from Amazon. <laughs> and give it a good read. Yeah, thank you. And thanks, Rach, as well. But yeah, don't worry. If you feel like you've ended up making the wrong decision which biome to move in, you can move. As soon as you can learn how to make portals or you find the Fey portal of your own realm, you're set. Don't worry. So here we go. Oh, we've got uh, we've got a friend. I'm going to be the element of surprise here. There we go. Got to make sure we get those resources. All right, I think we're good for a hot second. Got another hope echo here. Definitely be grabbing those. Get that lore. Eventually get those uh, recipes. They're going to be important. So here we go, Abeyance card. Okay, Abeyance is the first type of major card that you encounter, and that is that is kind of the easiest realm beyond the tutorial that you can be in, okay? That's all it means. You can see the level of difficulty and the level of most of the creatures is gonna be 10 in the top left. We play our forest, that's that's what we chose. That's what uh, we chose through Puck, so that's where we're going. Remain but if you choose the Swamp or the Desert, the you would play the Swamp or the Desert card. All right, so now we've got to wait for these bad guys to come through. And these bad guys will come through the big Fey portals. If you have player-made portals in your base, they do not come through. So there's definitely an advantage to making like a portal room down the line. Let's get you. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I successfully blocked one of them. <laughs> not the other. Again, they're fairly straightforward to take down level 10s, even with our really basic gear. You can't harvest their bodies, they disappear, but they do drop stuff, which is worth picking up. Okay, they're going to continue to come through until the portal's ready. Oh, I'm going to let the little rats live. You live, little friend. You go. You go. All right, here they come. A turtle made it to the water. <laughs> thank, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Yeah, these are like easy level bounds to deal with. They can get much harder as you progress. Oh, oh that wasn't that wasn't good. I did not block. There we go. Block. Hit. Oh, miss. Oh, oh. Let's get used to combat, guys. It's not my strong point, I'll admit. Yeah, we'll pick up the uh, pick up those items. God, I love being a turtle. is just subscribed. Oh, got another friend here. Thank you for the sub, Renkle Games. Two months with Prime. Thank you. Much appreciated. All right, so this means here, this means now that the portal is ready to go through. So let's go to our chosen home realm in the forest biome. Your path forward is winding and full of terrors. Save yourself. Survive the realms and rebuild all that has been lost. And there we have it, folks. That is a tutorial.